I sold my Dell Ultrawide, and I got an Asus ROG Swift. So in my last monitor video, I talked about my Dell U3415W, and I really, really liked that monitor when I made that video. But it had some downfalls. While I love the price, the size, and the quality, I just don't think I'm ready for ultrawides yet. So let me explain. Ultrawides run in a very wide aspect ratio. That's literally the point. And in theory, that makes things really awesome. You get a nice wide field of view when playing video games, no more black bars when watching native ultrawide movies. It's great, except not really. So what really happens is almost no game really supports it. All Source Engine games have terrible HUD scaling issues. Lots of games just don't support it at all. Some will support it, air quotes, by just cropping everything to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And some, even worse, won't do anything and just stretch a 16 by 9 image across your monitor. How does that help anyone? And before you all start commenting, yes, I know that there's workarounds for various titles, but the titles that don't have them and don't support ultrawide are really just like playing on a much smaller 27 inch 16 by nine monitor. The worst part is games are actually the best part of this. Take a Netflix movie perhaps, a nice cinematic experience that usually has black bars on the top and bottom, but not for you, the ultrawide gamer. You get to view that content in its native 21 by 9 aspect ratio. Except, not really. What actually happens is Netflix was designed for 16 by 9 aspect ratio monitors. So when they play the video back to you, they play it back in 16 by 9, which means you get black bars on the top and bottom, and black bars on the left and the right. Effectively shrinking your screen by as much as 30% in some cases. It's very annoying. Same with YouTube. Say somebody throws together a nice dramatic short film, or they're just adding black bars on top or bottom for effect. It's great, except whenever you watch YouTube content, you get black bars on the left and the right, and the top and the bottom. So you're viewing this tiny little screen wondering why you bought this monitor. And I know someone in the comments is going to say, bruh, did you know that there's a Netflix plugin that will crop in and zoom and remove all the black bars? Or, bruh, did you know that you could go into Google Chrome and inspect the element on YouTube and edit the video element to adjust its width and height so that it will play in the name? No, that's the whole point of what I'm trying to say, is the internet is not ready for ultrawides yet. Video content is not uploaded in its native format. Everything is reduced to 16 by nine, which makes sense. Most people use 16 by nine but it makes the experience for ultrawide users that much worse. And it's frustrating. There's a lot of hacking and tweaking and plugins and doing this and doing that just to get games or videos to play how you think they should. Now sure, there are people who will deal with these issues. There are people who love to be on the forefront of technology and don't mind these little setbacks. But for someone like me, for now, it's just a really big pain. Sure, in five years, web developers and video content creators will start developing their videos and their platforms with 21 by nine or other ultra wide aspect ratios in mind. But for now, it's just not ready. Okay, so now back to the beginning of this video. I said I sold my ultra wide. I still have my two 4K side monitors for productivity. So my main monitor has to be for one thing, media. It has to be for playing games, watching videos, editing videos, photo editing, anything that has to do with media goes on my main monitor. So the one thing that I had really liked but never actually used was high refresh rate. In fact, the reason I got the Dell 3415W was because it could be overclocked to 80 hertz instead of the standard 60 hertz that most ultrawides were sold at at the time. I decided to go big and started looking for 75 to 120 hertz monitors. I looked left and right and read reviews all over the internet. And the one monitor that I ended up getting was not 120 hertz like I had expected, but in fact 144 hertz running at 1440p. That monitor was the Asus ROG Swift PG278Q. It was the perfect compromise of resolution and refresh rate. After having 4K monitors for the past three years, I was not about to go back to having a 1080p panel just to have a high refresh rate. So finding something that was a step above in refresh rate and had that in between 1440p was a perfect win for me. So I bit the very expensive bullet and got this monitor. As for aesthetic, I will say that it's a little bit too much gamer for me, 
but I really appreciate the simple aesthetic besides a few red rings and logos here and there. The red ring in the center can actually be turned off using the on-screen menu button, and the NVIDIA stickers are rather easy to take off. And after that, it looks pretty plain Jane. Not bad. Speaking of NVIDIA, oh my goodness, I have to talk about G-Sync. My Dell did not have G-Sync, I did not buy this monitor because of G-Sync, but man oh man, is G-Sync amazing. I am sure you guys know what G-Sync is. It basically matches your monitor's refresh rate to the actual frames that are getting output by your graphics card so that there's never any desync. Whatever your graphics card is outputting, that's the refresh rate that your monitor adapts to all the way up to the maximum of 144 hertz in this case. But that is what makes this monitor amazing. Having the refresh rate is great, but the fact that I never have to deal with screen tearing or anything because the monitor just naturally adapts to the refresh rate is great. Sure, it has great colors, 99% sRGB, blah, 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 blah. The real point of this monitor is the refresh rate. And I hinted at this in my last video, but I really think the refresh rate is the single most important aspect of gaming performance. I think it's more important than graphics fidelity, aspect ratio, immersion, and color accuracy. Nothing hits you in the face like a high refresh monitor, and you can't know until you experience it for yourself. Luckily I have a GTX 1080, so I can usually play most of my games at around 144Hz without much issue. But some of the more demanding titles I have to turn down my settings to achieve 144 constant frames a second. Because in my opinion the gameplay and the refresh rate is much more important than having ultra or high on the texture setting. And refresh rate is just something that becomes so obviously amazing once you have it that it's so hard to go back. I can easily notice the change in refresh rate simply by moving my mouse cursor from my middle monitor to my side monitors. It's like night and day. Everything is smoother and faster. Moving windows boxes here and there, animations within windows, even highlighting and typing. Yes, typing. I can notice the visual difference in the refresh rate. It might seem retarded to talk about a 144Hz monitor when typing. But after using it for a while, you really do start to notice when you switch back to a 60Hz panel, and it kind of bothers you. So I have been hyping this refresh rate for quite a while now. So is this really something that's specific to this monitor? Well, no, not really. In fact, this particular monitor actually has quite a few annoyances that I'd like to bring up. First of all, it only has one display input, which is a display port, and it has two USB ports. Now, it's not a huge deal because I actually use DisplayPort and I use both of the USB ports, but on my old monitor, I had four USB inputs, an HDMI input, and a display input, and a display pass-through. Heck, even my two 4K monitors from three years ago have a DisplayPort and two HDMI inputs. It just seems super weird to only have one. Like I said, in my particular case, it's not a big deal, but every once in a while I'd like to plug in my camera or maybe my MacBook into the monitor, and I can't without going underneath the desk and messing with all the cables. Second of all is the price. It's $670 for a 27-inch monitor. That's pretty steep. In fact, I did some looking around, and it may be the single most expensive 27-inch panel that isn't 5K or a touchscreen. So all in all, what do I think about the monitor? I personally think that for the time being, ultra-wide being where it is, and while we wait for VR to fully mature, I think the Asus ROG Swift PG278Q is the best gaming monitor money can buy, even if you need a lot of money to buy it. It has its downfalls and its issues, but it's a really great package for the ultimate gaming experience. If, however, you are a multitasker with a single monitor, or a designer who needs extreme color accuracy, Save your money, get something cheaper, get another monitor, get something with better color accuracy. But if you're like me and you kind of do a little bit of everything with a gaming heavy influence, it's a great buy. If you guys like the video, please consider sharing or liking the video with someone who you think might enjoy it. And if you want to watch more videos from me, hit that subscribe button. Later guys.